I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And today we are finishing up my top 250 through 101. We're doing 125 to 101. And Jason's giving commentary on these games and approving them or disproving them. Uh, then when you're done watching these, I guess you can go back and watch our top 100 games of all time, of which we are 40% done at this point, but you'll see them all. And next year you could watch the top 1,000, right? You can yeah, I don't think go so. Go even further. But you can see Jason's top 100. He already, we already did that earlier this year. With Melody. With Melody. All right, here we go. 125 has been on my list for a long time, and that is King of Tokyo. Now, King of Tokyo, just simple fun. Uh, the I think you need to play with the power-up expansion after the first time. Mm -hmm. And the new stuff, each one, the new Anubis expansion is amazing. They're really good. King of New York is also a good game, but King of Tokyo is my game of choice. It's just simpler. Yes, yes, and it's it's fun. No matter when you play it, it's fun. Number 124 is a two-player worker placement game, which I did not think was possible, but this one does such a great job. The box looks boring, but the game is amazing, and that's Targi. Oh, yeah. Targi is just... I mean, Jason was like, Tom, this game is great, this game is great, this game is great. And I was like, eh, we'll see. And I played it, and I was like, okay, Jason's right. This game is great. You know, just putting the, the workers down on, on these rows and columns. On rows and pulling of the cards. Yeah, it's great. It's really neat, because then you're, you can get the cards that are at the intersections. And I'm like, please don't go to that row. Please don't go to that row. You know, as your opponent does, it's, it's well, well put together. 123 is a game that I'm like the only person at Dice Tower who really talks about this one, but I love it. The card game is also good, but I prefer the miniatures and the board game, and that's Dungeon Twister. The, When's the last time you played Dungeon It's probably been like... Years, because it's so out of print. This is a game that, when we talk about games that should come back in print, why hasn't this one come back in print yet? <laughs> or is it coming back in print? I don't know what happened. I'm just saying this game is great. It's basically... Like a game, uh, like a, a amusement game, like this wizard, six, eight characters in this dungeon, and you and you fight each other, or you try to run past each other and get out the other side. But the board spin. Right, and there's very little luck in the game, and the characters are all different. It's really fun. All right, 122, another Star Wars game, and that's Star Wars Armada. Now, I like X-Wing. X-Wing is super fun, flying the ships around. Yes. But I tend to like Armada big, better because I like the big ships... And the whole broadsides. And then you still get the little X-Wings flying around. Are you going to get the new $200 Emperor's ship? That thing is... That, that thing's like this big? The execution? <laughs> no. No. It looks cool, but no. I have enough Armada stuff, I think. I don't... This one will probably drop off my list because I just can't keep up with miniature games. But this is my favorite tactical miniature game. All right. 121. One of the hardest cooperative games of all time. What would that be? I've only won it once. I've even played with the designer and still not won it. You know, this leads to, well, whenever we do our trivia, you're going to have to change that first slate now, aren't you? What first slate? The first slate that says, game that Tom has won zero oh, times. Oh, yeah. No, I have changed it already. It now <laughs> says, I've won it one time. That's true. And the game is Robinson Crusoe from Portal Games and... Wow, this game is hard, but it's also very thematic. Now, we often get asked, this is one of our most asked questions is, how comes we haven't reviewed First Martians, which is the follow-up to this? And I just don't like it as much. I'm going to eventually, I need to play more, but I need to play through the missions of it. The rule book also was not very kind. But working in a science on a planet, that sounds cool, but it's basically fixing generators when they break. Robinson Crusoe, there's lions attacks, and you're running from the cannibals in the jungle and stuff. That's just exciting. You know, it's not... First Martian just wasn't as exciting, which is why Robinson Crusoe's on the list. I like First Martians. Well, then you can put it on your list. All right, my number 120. Jason mentioned this earlier when we were talking about um, Ave Caesar. And this game is the one that finally beat Ave Caesar down from being my favorite racing game, or one of my favorite racing games, and that is Downforce. Because, first of all, Restoration Games did an amazing job bringing this back. Secondly, yes. I was like, why have I never played this game before? It's a game where you're racing these cars around, and you have a car, and you want your car to win, but you can pick the car that wins that's someone else's if you think they're going to win instead. Y you never played Cleveland Detroit Grand Prix? No, because that's a really boring-sounding name. 
Come on, Cleveland, Detroit Grand Prix. It sounds so great. Don't care about either of those. Cities. NASCAR 500, Daytona 500. You never played that one? Yeah, I I, I love those cities. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, I just never played the original one. But restoration at this point, everything they touch is gold. Yes. Right? Oh, it's so good. So looking forward to, to seeing what else. And they just came out with an expansion track and stuff for this. Yeah, with the, with the loop-de-loop and crashing. Yeah. Like, there's no loops in racetracks, but whatever. <laughs> 119. The Command and Color system has produced many great games over the years. And there's we're going to be talking about uh, two of them in this section, I think. Yep. So the, 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 the lower one, but the most popular one of the entire series, and that's Memoir 44. Now, the first one was Battleline. I like Battleline. There was a few things in Battleline were broken and didn't weren't smooth. But when Memoir came out, he fixed all that. Mm -hmm. And it had great miniatures. It They came out with a ton of expansions. This yes. game is fantastic. You know, a lot of war gamers look down their nose at Memoir, which I never understand because it's very historical. It's very simple and they're fast-paced battles. I love it. No, I really war, do. war gamers don't look down on it. You know, I know a lot of war gamers and... A lot of people like the game. It doesn't matter if you play heavy or war games. This is a great game. I agree. 118 is a game that's been on the list since the very beginning, and that is Battle Line. Now, Lost Cities is a great two-player game. But I think Reiner Knizia made an even better one when he made... Uh, what was Shot and Totten. Shot and Totten. And then they, they rethemed it as Battle Line. In fact, they just re-released it as Shot and Totten a couple years ago. Yellow did. And it's the exact same game as Battle Line. So either one, Shot and Totten or Battle Line. I love this game. You are playing cards, trying to outdo your opponent. It's a two-player game. And you're making groups of three cards, and you want your groups to be better than your opponent. Uh, and then you have these special tactic cards that can mess everything up a little bit. But you can only play one more than your opponent's played. Yes. So if I play one and Jason decides to never play anymore, I can never play another one. And that's a really... At first I was like, ah, he's messed the game up. But um, I, they've really grown on me. Do you like yeah. playing with them or without them? Um, I like both versions. I mean, the original version is great. You don't need them. But adding those little things, like I'm going to steal a card from your side and add it to my side, and the little things like that really puts a twist on the game. I really love this game. So, Battle Line. 117 is one of my favorite abstract strategy games. It's my favorite from the GIF series. What do you think it is? Of the GIF series. No, Zertz is my least favorite of that series. No, Punk is my least favorite. Uh, Zertz is my second least favorite. Now, my favorite is Yinch. Yinch is the easiest of the series to play. It's the easiest to understand. His games can be kind of not yeah. always understandable. And I like some of the other ones, too. I think, was it? Uh, Gif. Gif, no. And I, Flinch, something with a They all have weird names in them. But in Yinch, you're just trying to get five in a row. Yeah. But whenever you move your pieces and jump over other pieces, you flip them all. To both, you know, if they're on your color, you'll flip to the opponent's colors. You got to try to think the best way to do it. And every time you make five in a row, you remove one of your rings from the board, which gives you fewer options. It's it's a great game. It has a really deep strategy. Yes. Number 116 is a tower building game, which is coming out at Essen next week, being reprinted by Quinnen, finally. Really? Yes, Forenzi. Ooh. Yeah, Forenzi is a game that a lot of people haven't played, but... You know, a lot of people. One of the cool things about Small World is you take the, you take a race and uh, you know the combination of the race and the characteristic. Yeah. And the ones that you skip over, you have to put coins on. That's what Frenzy is. It has a bunch of cards there, and each card you skip over, you have to put a tower piece on. And some of the cards are like bad. They'll like lose two points or something. I don't want that. But when there's seven tower pieces on it. Maybe I'll take it, right? Because you need those tower pieces. Right, and the points. tower pieces are different colors, and you're building towers in front of you. It's 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 a pretty simple game, but it's one of my favorite tower building games. Mine, too. I really love the game. I didn't know it was being reprinted. Well, make sure you get a copy for our Dice Tower Library. Oh, we will have a copy of that in there. If not, I still have my original copy. Oh, I do, too. <laughs> Actually, you're right. I already have a copy of that. But that's okay. <laughs> we, it's a great game. One fifteen. It's the game that killed Citadels for me. I like Citadels, but this game did it better, and that's Libertalia. Libertalia has 30 different roles, and each game you're going to be using different sets of them. You'll draw nine, and everyone takes those same nine, and then you just play these roles, and you're putting them on a pirate ship, and they all interact with each other. You like Citadels better? Oh, yeah. Um, I have some issues with Libertalia, especially the when everyone plays the same card, and you have to look at which number is the 
Well, mine was a six of that card. Mine was a four. There, there are some fiddly things that I'm not as happy with Libertalia. Okay, that's fair enough, but I still love the game. 114, a fantastic game. Francis Drake. Francis Drake has two parts to it. The first part, you are going in the market, and it has that whole Tokaido thing where how far do you want to move? You can move as far as you want, but you can never go back. Mm -hmm. So you move farther to get the better stuff, but then the other person might move slower and get more stuff. And then the second half, you send your ships all over the board and blow stuff up and try to get points. Yes. Beautiful components. Really nice game. Number 113 just came out this year and is a game that has knocked Hero and Star Realms off my list, and that is Shards of Infinity. And once they come out with the expansion, which I think is happening soon or has happened mm -hmm. or whatever, more cards... Shards of Infinity is basically a deck builder yep. where you attack your opponent. Best played with two, as is both Star Realms and Hero Realms. Which is most of those kind of games. It, play, playing a group game in that kind of game, is in, it, it's a tactical game. It's not meant to play more than two. Well, it can be, but I don't agree. 112 is a game that Jason loves, and I do too, because it's, an, again, we, we both kind of like those real-time cooperative games, except in this one, you can't talk. And that's Magic Maze. Love it. <laughs> when we first played this, and then, but you can't, you can communicate. <laughs> you stick a pawn in front of somebody else, and then you're like, just put that pawn there, and they're like, wait till you see the new Magic Maze. There's a new expansion, right? No, there's a whole new game that's mind blowing. It uses colors, and you have to trans. It, it's Magic Maze on steroids, like more than the game itself. It's got hexes. I think it was Hexes. I, I got a preview of it at Gen Con, and I think it's coming out at, at Essen. Wait till you see this new version. Wow. All right. I look forward to it. All right. 111 is a game that very few people play because the company did not print very many. And that's Defenders of the Last Stand. Defenders of the Realm is a great game, and you might see future Defender games in the, in the, in the future, but Defenders of the Last Stand did, took it in a post-apocalyptic setting. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about the post-apocalyptic setting, but the story and adventures in this one are great. Now, it's by 8th Summit. It has some cool plastic miniatures, but the production is okay, even with the plastic miniatures. But it's just so much fun. I love it. The, the stories are great. It, you're all working together to stop Mad Max-type people and zombie mutant things. And it's just it's really cool. Didn't we play this right after that new Mad Max Fury Road came out? Yeah, I think so. Witness me! <laughs> 110 is another one of my favorite abstract strategy games. Uh, it can play two or three players, but I only play it with two, and that's Santorini. Yes. It's a fantastic uh, game in which you are building the little buildings in Santorini and trying to get your guy to the third floor of one. But each person has a special power, which is game-changing. And, I mean, it's they're very different, and you have to figure out how these two powers interact and how my power can outbeat yours. Yeah, there's a reason why this won the Dice Tower Awards last year. Yeah, really great. 109 is one of the Dice Tower Essential Games, uh, area control game inside the human body, Viral. This is one of those games that the first time I, I saw, I was like, wow, what a great theme. I mean, how many people do themes like that? It's neat. And you're this virus in this guy. Don't worry, he lives... Um, and if you get too powerful, then you're and kicked out of the body. Because antibodies come. Yeah. But then you just come right back in and you're trying to control the different regions. And also you have these cards you play that give you, you know, abilities to do things, but you can get better ones as the game goes by. And that's something I always like in games. And you follow the actual blood flow. So you can't just like go from one, from the heart to the liver, unless you're actually following the veins and arteries. It's really cool. Yeah. 108 is the newer version of a game that's actually in my top 100. This one is some, Sam, actually most people disagree with me on this one, but Clank in Space. I love Clank in Space, but why, I like Clank better. Why do people disagree with you? Well, Sam likes Clank in Space better. Oh, oh. Than Clank. Well, Clank in Space has the modular board, which is... Sure, it has a modular board. It also makes you... There's you more have to involved. You have to go farther in. You have to get a key card. And that's all great. I just kind of like the simplicity of Clank better. However, again, this is 108. I love this game a lot, too. And the new Apocalypse expansion really made it shine. Mm -hmm. 107, new to the list, came out of Essen last year. And I love this game, Dinosaur Island. 
Na, 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 na. It's Jurassic Park. Yes. And in this game, you're building a, a park of dinosaurs. Now, my copy has little rubbery dinosaurs that I found on the internet. Of I course. Love, I love dinosaurs, and it has... I got the deluxe version with the coins and all, but I played it. I, this would have made my list based on the original version of the game with the pink plastic dinosaurs. It's just fun. It's fun to sit there and go, all right, I'm going to build a peaceful park. And Jason's building a much more exciting park with raptors and T-Rexes, but then yes. they get out and eat his people. So, you know, it's it works well. Hey, at least some people will survive. Not Nedry, but others. Yeah, too bad, Nedry. All right, 106 is a follow-up to an early game from Richard Borg called Hera and Zeus, and the new version is Thunder and Lightning. Mm -hmm. I, as a kid, I played Stratego. It was yep. a great game. But Stratego has some flaws. It's not a perfect game. I don't want to play it now, this, especially since this game exists. This is the card version of Stratego with more. Yep. You're trying to find one card your opponent has. If it's on the board, you just you, you move the cards around and you capture it like Stratego. If it's in your hand, you might just pull it out of their hand and get it. So you have to, like, if it's in your hand, you got to be careful because your opponent can just pull it out. You don't want to put it on a table, but you might be forced to. And it just works really well. Yes, very well done. 105 is the ultimate convention party game game show that we do at every convention almost. And that is Wits and Wagers. Wits and Wagers is a great game. Now, Sam says that it, it's only that high because of those game shows. I agree, but it works well for those. And I'll do those game shows even like in private. Like I'll do them at my church. I'll do a little game show thing there. And the whole idea of Wits and Wagers is when you're playing with someone who knows all the, all, everything, I don't want to play with them. But in Wits and Wagers, you have no idea of knowing these answers. So you're just trying to figure out who might be the closest. Yeah, without going over. Without going over. <laughs> 104 is a game. This is the first year it actually fell to my top 100. I just haven't played it in a while, but it's still a fantastic game. Sam likes the sequel better, Shogun. I like the original Wallenstein. I like I like the other one um, in The Time of the King even better. Las Duas de Cruces, the no original. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But that game is, I don't know. I mean, I like the, Cru the Crusade one better. I mean, I, mean I, I like it a lot, but it's... It's not, it's just a lot of fighting in the tower. You just move around and fight. Well, this yeah. one has a lot more strategy where you're going around and building and playing the cards. It's really, it's a big Euro game with a little bit of combat. And the Cube Tower is just an amazing thing. Cube Tower is genius. All right, we're almost at the top here. 103. I already mentioned, what? Did you just see we're it? We're three away. No, oh. but. Okay, so I mentioned that my second favorite Commands and Colors game was Memoir 44. What's the best one? Uh, Star Wars Queen's Gambit, but you already said that. Well, that's not really Commands and Colors. That was like the the prequel <laughs> to Commands and Colors. My favorite is, well, Commands and Colors, Ancients. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite one. I didn't think I'd like it. When I heard about it, they were saying it's going to have blocks instead of miniatures. And you have to put stickers on everything. Stickers. Which oh, by the way, hours. it's the worst stickering game there is. Yes. Um, they've made a lot of versions. World War One, Napoleon, and everything. But this one concentrates on holding the line. Having those leaders hold that line as you move. Because if your Use line gets broken, you're... Use those Oh. And there's so many expansions for this game. It just works really mm -hmm. well. I love it. Commands and colors. All right. 102, which I can almost guarantee will be in my top 100 next year. Because I, play I played it like 15 times this year already. And that is Space Base. Yes. This is the game that killed Machikoa for me. You roll dice. You see what your ships do. You get points. You get you buy more ships, better ships, and when people other people roll dice, suddenly your numbers are popping. Oh, you can build cool combos in this game. You gotta it's, decide if you want to keep your thing or flip it to the other side to get the power when someone else rolls. It's really well done. And I love this game, and it's gonna be in my top of our next year. I can feel it. I love feel it, it too. Uh, I I I hope there's an expansion that comes out for it. That's how good it is. And finally, the one that just missed the top 100, Pandemic. Legacy. I'm not even saying season one or season two. It's just one big long game. Season three. The reason I think it's not my top 100 is because I'm done with it, right? Yeah. Except for season three. I'm not going to go back and play it again. But the experience of playing, especially, they were both fun, but especially one when we played it and 
as each thing happened and we were just like, I can't believe what? it. This is amazing. And it makes me never want to play Pandemic again because it was so much better. Pandemic's a great game, but Pandemic Legacy is just amazing. Yes. I mean, it's such a story and such an experience that I love it. Season three, can't wait for it. So there you go. We finished 101. Now go back and watch 100 through 1 and see what games are even better than these. But I thought we should point some of them out. Thanks, Jason, for showing up and doing some color commentary on this. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levina, thanks for having a good list. See you on the day. Thank you. See you next time.